Good morning. It is Saturday, October the 1st, a little after 10 a.m. This is Shay Gibson with Wind Alert bringing you a Tropics update. So we continue to watch Major Hurricane Matthew in the Central Caribbean Sea. It is now a Category 4 storm. Last night it did achieve Category 5 status with winds of 160 miles per hour. The winds have fallen just a little bit this morning to 155 miles per hour as it continues to head to the west. The general location of it is just to the north of northern Columbia. If we look here at our Wind Alert Storm Track Viewer, you can actually find this online for free at windalert.com slash storm slash Matthew. You can see what I'm looking at, but you see the general direction of the storm to the west and then ultimately to the northwest, and you can see the category of the storm prediction being a four down to a three, but either way, it looks like this is gonna remain a major hurricane, and these islands of Jamaica and Western Hispaniola and Cuba need to be really uh, preparing for this storm. It's just turning out to be a very serious situation for them as a, storm, a high storm surge with very strong winds, catastrophic winds are inevitable for those islands, it looks like at this point. So uh, I hope that they do well and thoughts are going to be going out with them over the next day or two as they prepare for a major hurricane uh, landfall across uh, the eastern side of Jamaica and ultimately into Cuba. Okay, so here's the NHC track guidance overall through 2 a.m. Thursday. Keeps this as a major hurricane going up through Cuba and then downgrades to a hurricane. That's due to some of the land features and mountainous areas of Cuba probably going to weaken the storm a little bit. But then as it goes into the Bahamas, some of the models are actually rebuilding the system back to major hurricane status again. That's uncertain, and a lot of this track guidance is uncertain at this point once it passes Cuba. We won't really know until probably Monday or Tuesday when the storm actually starts forward progress to the north. And, and it lets us know what speed it's going to be taking as it heads toward the Bahamas. We may have a better idea of which way the storm is going to go. You can see how wide the cone of uncertainty is as it reaches into the Bahamas because there's a lot of model guidance. Some takes this out to sea, some brings it in closer to the Florida coast, and then ultimately beyond that, it's just way too uncertain, too far out to tell anything right now for the ma mainly the eastern coast of the United States. So here's the floater image for Matthew. We can see last night that the eye was a lot more pronounced even into earlier this morning, but right now it looks like it's going through a little bit of an eye wall restructuring phase. We can see here in the last frames there is a little bit of a wedge-like feature that's going in. This is due to dry air to its northwest, and it indicates that there may be a little bit of dry air ingestion being pulled into the storm system, and it could make it into the core, ultimately weaken it. But right now it looks like the outer core of the eye has collapsed, and, or I'm sorry, the inner core of the eye has collapsed, and the outer core is starting to rebuild again. There's a little bit of a nodule right there, and it looks like the eye wall could be restructured, and this storm actually could restrength it to a Category 5 status again. So that is not unheard of uh, as it goes through a slight weakening phase and then rebuilds again. So we'll have to watch and see what happens with the center of this storm. We'll also have to watch to see what the, the dry air effects out ahead of it are. In fact, if we look at the shear for the storm, there's some wester Westerly upper shear will go up to 250 millibars, it's about 36,000 feet, and we can see that there is this westerly shear coming into the storm, there's dr or a loft at the higher levels, so where the outflow is, some of this shear makes it down under the outflow, and what the, with this dry air from the mid-levels and upper-level loft coming down, it gets pulled down into the storm, so we could see a weakening phase with this, this is why the NHC guidance does weaken this to a category 3, because it's betting on some of this drier air that's to its northwest to be ingested into the storm itself, so that's kind of the thought there, but one of the main ingredients for intensifying the storm, uh, and one thing that may keep it as a higher category 4 or 5 status, is the fact that we do have this warmer water, I talked about this in the last uh, YouTube video that I did and actually yesterday in a blog that the heat potential in this area is is great so the storm it has not even tapped into some of these very warmer you know very much warmer waters right here uh, the darker colors represent where the water is deeper I'm sorry wa the water is warmer deeper so we call this the epipelagic zone the top layer of the water that goes down to about 650 feet and if we look at it, so we have the water surface here, and then we have the epipelagic layer. Well, a lot of times you'll have warmer water that sits kind of close to the top, and then a storm comes along, and it sort of churns that water up, and you get this cool water upwelling from below. Well, in this case, we have the epipelagic zone. That warm water layer is much deeper, so a storm coming across the top of it is not going to be as quick to remove that warm water layer on top. So we don't get that cold water upwelling, and what that does is it actually fuels the storm, and it provides a lot of warm water at the surface to be able to, to fuel it. Uh, and so it hasn't even reached that yet. As it goes to the northwest towards Jamaica, it's going to be going over this warmer body of water. So it'll be interesting to see what happens there as uh, the National Hurricane Center and some of the model guidance takes this down to a Category 3. It could well stay at Category 4 or 5 heading in this general vicinity.
Okay, so take a look at the water vapor imagery. You can see Matthew here below <coughs> Hispaniola. And right now, this northerly turn is going to be basically guided by a trough that's digging down into the Western Caribbean. So that plus there's a ridge building out here that's giving it some guidance in this general direction. So in the future, with this storm going up through from, you know, up from the south through the north, wedged in between these two, this is going to be, this feature right here in the Atlantic is going to be a huge player in this as to whether or not this storm gets nudged towards the east coast or if it erodes and then we have another trough up here to the north we'll talk about in just a little bit uh, the storm could get pulled out to sea so we think that there's going to be one track one that's going to bring it in really really close to the east coast or there's another one that's going to be pulling it away in time from uh, from the south off to the northeast so taking a look at the track guidance overall we can see kind of the spread of this the gfs is keeping this one very close and then the euro is actually swinging this one out. So a lot of guidance in between keeps this with a little bit of a nudge from that Bermuda Ridge out here, pushing it in towards the coastline. That seems to be a little bit of a trend right now. You see this kind of recurve right here as it goes through the Bahamas and then uh, towards the coast and then back out to sea. But by then, I mean, we're talking 96 to 120 hours out. By then, there's so many things that can happen, so many variables that can uh, happened between now and then that we just don't know for sure but let's take a look at the models this is the GFS model and this is starting from today and we start to go forward and we see this ridge building right here this is what I'm talking about this is called a Bermuda High and as we go in time we see that this model let me go back and make sure that we're able to get it moving forward here there we go watch what that ridge does that ridge tends to sort of build or fade back to the east and then build in and you can see where it builds back to the east again and then nudges the system in towards the coastline. From there things get really uncertain. I mean we can run this model forward and then this may change by tomorrow but the GFS has been very very consistent on keeping this storm hugged into the east coast very close and this is going to be a very strong hurricane at this point as it comes off the southeast coast. This is just the GFS guidance on it. So if we take a look at the Euro we can see that we still see the same Bermuda Ridge building, but then that actually erodes and fades off to the east. Um, and then what happens is that we have a we have what's called a Rex block. We have high pressure up here to the north. We have a mid-level low or an upper-level low, small upper-level low developing here. This has counterclockwise rotation, which could pull this system out to see around the ridge that builds out in this general direction. So we may have a, an avenue for this storm to be able to be pulled out to sea based on this feature right here. And you know th this is still pretty far out as well. So a lot of variables can happen if the storm slows down uh, and sticks around to the south a little bit more for another day or two. Uh, some of the features that happen across to the north may may slide by from west to east. And then we have our next thing. So we have a trough up next and then we have another high pressure behind that next. And so the slower the system goes, the more uncertain the forecast becomes. Uh, we probably won't have a better idea until about Monday, I'd say Sunday or Monday, when the storm is actually making forward progress and we have a certain speed of it uh, that we may be able to time that correctly with some of the features and some of this traffic that's moving across to the north, across the uh, continental United States. So that's kind of that's why it's so uncertain right now. And, and people are asking, you know, what's going to happen? Is this thing going to hit the coastline? Well, we just don't know. It hasn't even made the northerly turn yet. It's so far south right now that we, we would just have to take this one day to day. And plus, we're talking about late next week if it's going to have any impacts to the eastern coast. So I think that's going to do it for the tropics update for right now. And we'll keep an eye on this system and see if it holds Category 4, four storm status through today and tomorrow. And like I said, it could maintain that status and maybe even build back to Category 5 again. Anything is possible right now with it. But until next time, take care and thanks for watching.